What's up, YouTube? This is your man, Rio 855 Yes, and this is another session of geniuses. Uh, I'll talk about a lot of geniuses, like Prince, uh, Teddy Riley, people like that. Uh, this is from the producer's point again. And this one is about my man, Norman Whitfield. To me, he was the man, the consciousness of Motown. Yeah, Norman Whitfield. As y'all know, you know Norman Whitfield in the movie Temptations, some younger cats. Um, yeah, uh, played by the actor, male. I forget his last name, but his name was Mel. But yeah, that was Norman Whitfield. A lot of people know him as arrogant and cocky, but he was a genius. Uh, the guy was a great writer and a great producer, and he wrote a lot of innovative hits, and especially in the social conscious area. He was so good. Uh, as y'all know, some of the hits like Ain't Too Proud to Big, By the Temptations, Heard It Through the Grapevine with Marvin Gaye and Gladys Knight, Cloud Nine, Temptations, I Can't Get Next to You, The Road War, Ball of Confusion, uh, Just My Nat Imaginations, and Smiling Faces, My Papa Was a Rolling Stone. And later on, he, you know, he had his own thing and he was responsible for car wash. So I'm just going to get into a little bit of uh, uh, analogy of history of Norman Whitfield and when he was born. He was born Norman Jesse Whitfield, May 12th, 1940. He died September 16th, 2008. He was an American songwriter and producer who worked with Barry Gordy's Motown labels during the 60s. He's been credited as one of the creators of the Motown sound and the late 1960s subgenre of psychedelic soul. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Most deaf. During his 25 year career, as I stated, with Phil co wrote and produced many enduring hits for Motown artists, like I said, including Temptations, Ain't Too Proud to Bear, I'm, I Know I'm Losing You, Heard It Through the Grapevine, Gladys Knight, and Marvin Gaye, as Marvin Gaye being one of the biggest hits on there, uh, Cloud Nine, I Can't Get Next to You, Temptations, War, and when, you know, that guy, Ball of Confusion, Temptations, Just My Imaginations, Temptations, Smiling Faces, Sometimes, uh, Undisputed Truth, and Papa Was a Rolling Stone, Temptations. And Whitfield wrote extensively with the Temptations as producer-songwriter. He produced eight of their albums between 69 and 73, 1973. He then started his own label with Phil Records in 1975, which yielded the Rolls Royce hit Car Wash. Oh, yes, alongside his Motown lyrical collaborator, Barry Strong. He was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2004. He, co he wrote and co wrote 61 hits on the UK charts and 92 on the US charts. Wow. Yes, with Phil. That man was bad, man. He was bad. Okay, Winfield was born a native of Harlem, New York, and spent much of his teen years in local pool halls in the late teens, and his family moved to Detroit, Michigan, so that his father could join his sisters in work and her husband chain of drugstores, bought well drugs. He attended Northwest High School. Yeah. At 19, Whitfield began frequently Motown, his Ville U.S. A offices for a chance to work for the growing label founder Barry Gordy Jr. Recognized Whitfield persistence and hired him for the quality control department, which determined which songs would or would 
not be released. Whitfield joined Motown's in-house songwriting staff, co-writing the Marvin Gaye's hit Pride and Joy. The Marvel has too many fish in the sea. And the Velvet's uh, Needle in a Haystack. He took over Smokey Robson role as the main producers in The Temptation in 1966 after his Ain't Too Proud to Beg performed better than Robinson's Get Ready on the pop charts. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, that's Whitfield for you. Uh, I think Whitfield's main thing was when he wrote the hits. I heard it through the grapevine and this was it. He found a songwriter collabor collaborator and lyricist Barrett Strong. That's the relationship that worked and that's the relationship that went on and made him a legend and performed on Motown's first, on Motown's first hit record, Money, That's What I Want. That was Barrett Strong's first Motown record and Money, That's What I Want was the first hit and wrote material for The Temptation and other Motown artists such as Marvin Gaye and Gladys Knight and Pips, both of whom Whitfield produced in versions of Whitfield's strong com compositions. I heard it through the grapevine. The Gladys Knight and Pips version was the best selling Motown single so far, but it was surpassed a year later by Gaye's version. Then Gaye's went platinum, sold a couple of million, probably more, and uh, it stayed on the charts longer. And both of them sound different, but you get a much deeper, soulful, more than gay. I'm talking about deep soul. Glass Nights was more up tempo. Uh, you can kind of dance to it. So they both great songs. After Temptations, lead singer Dave Ruffin was replaced by Dennis Edwards in 68. Whitfield moved the group into a harder, darker sound that featured a blend of psychedelic rock and funk, heavily inspired by the work of Sly and Family Stone and Funkadelic. Yeah, this is when they went to psychedelic soul, kind of. He lay heavy in the lyrics of Barrett Strong and everything. It was much more intense, and the sound was much more intense. So funk and conscious lyrics went together and it blended that sound, you know, especially for the times it was coming in the 68 through the 69 era and early 70s. So that's where he gelled. That's when Winfield really became good and important. And he was the man, you know, he was the man at Motown then because he was writing these type of hits. Yeah. And one of the first Temptation singles to feature his new psychedelic soul was Cloud Nine. Yeah, Cloud Nine was the one in 68, which earned Motown's first Grammy Award, Best Rhythm and Blues Performance by Duo Group, Vocal Instrumental. A second Grammy Award for Best R&B Vocal Performance by Duo Group for Whitfield and The Temptation came in 73 with Papa Was a Rolling Stone. And the single uh, instrumental B side earned with Phil a range of Paul Rise Grammy Awards for Best RB Instrumental Performance, and with Phil Strong shared the Songwriters Award for Best Rhythm and Blues Song. Yeah, yeah, that really propelled him. Papa was a Rolling Stone, one, not one of my favorite songs, but it was a hit for the time, and with Phil nailed it, you know. And I think at that time it was one of the biggest, you know, uh, temptations at the time in the seventies and one of the biggest last 70 hits. And like I said, Whitfield had a hold on the temptations and I don't think another producer could do no more after that. And so that was basically the temptation swan song. And I think that era was over and Whitfield's to me was just beginning because he had more to come. Yeah. Psychedelic soul in the breakdown with Motown. Psychedelic soul records Whitfield produced for the temptations of other artists such as Edwin Starr. Yeah, that's who did war. And the undisputed truth experimented with and updated the Motown sound for the late 60s. 
longer songs, distorted guitars, multi-tracking drums, and innovative vocal arrangements became trademarks of Whitfield Productions and later of his records produced by Motown staffers he coached, including Frank Wilson. But friction and antagonism grew between Whitfield and The Temptations. The group hated how Whitfield put more emphasis on the instrumentation instead of their vocals, and that he was writing fewer romantic ballads for the for them. Everybody know the Papa was a Rolling Stone. They wanted a ballad, but this is this is the time and this was the era. You had to have longer songs, and you had to have a bridge you have to get into instrumentations you have to kick the ass what was going on people wanted to dance people wanted to get into it people were smoking you know having a good time and up 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 you know getting into consciousness so this is what people wanted we feel will often record notably different versions of songs with different artists in search of a hit and did so successfully in the cases of Edward Starwood War, originally recorded by Temptations, and The Undisputed Truth with Smiling Faces sometime. 1971, also originally by The Temptations. Wow. Papa was a Rolling Stone. 72 was done first by The Undisputed Truth, before Whitfield re recorded the song with The Temptations for a longer, more definitive and mass massively successful version. One of the Whitfield's last major hits at Motown was Yvonne's Fair, It Should Have Been Me, 1975 song he had written in 63 and re-recorded originally with Kim Weston. Wow. Whitfield, I tell you, Whitfield had it going on, man. And Whitfield records and later years. In 75, Whitfield held Motown, or I'm sorry, Whitfield left Motown following his moves from Detroit to form his own label, Whitfield Records. His first act was The Undisputed Truth, whom he had convinced to leave Motown, following, followed by Rose Royce, Willie Hutch, Nitro, Mama T, and Junior Walker. The Undisputed Truth scored their second biggest hit in 76 with the disco song You Plus Me Equals Love, their first single on Whitfield Records. Norman Whitfield had an international smash hit in 76, 1976 with Rolls Royce Car Watch issued on MCA Records. Rolls Royce, whose members were originally Edward Starr, back in band, while at Motown went on to record three more popular albums and had two huge UK hits with Wishing on a Star and Love Don't Live Here Anymore, but could never top the success of Car Watch. Yeah, I had that album, Car Watch, and that just was a huge, huge soundtrack. And I think it, it was like three million off the gate or something. It, it was huge. Uh, I played, that was one of the first uh, records where my mom replayed and I would play and I was a little kid at the time and that four or five years old. And that just, I love that soundtrack. Zigzag, my favorite song. With, okay, Car Watch was served as the theme song in the 1976 motion picture, Car Watch, the Car Watch soundtrack one with Phil Grammy Award for Best Album or Best Original Score written for a motion picture or a television special. He also composed the theme song for 1977 motion picture Which Way Is Up performed by Star God. Star God. Yeah, I knew that one. In the early 1980s, Whitfield began working as a producer for Motown again. Him and the Temptation 1983 hit single Sell Away and the soundtrack to The Last Dragon. Told you, told you the man is a genius. On January 18, 2005, Whitfield pleaded guilty for failing to report royalty income he earned from 1995 to 1999 to the internal revenue. Yeah, facing charges of tax evasion on more than two million worth of income. He was sentenced to six months of house confinement and $25,000 fine. He was not in prison because of health problems such as diabetes. 
during his last months alive, Whitfield was bedridden at Los Angeles Cedar Sinai Medical Center, where he underwent treatment for diabetes and other ailments. Whitfield fell into a coma, briefly improved, but eventually succumbed to the diabetic complications. Whitfield died on September 16, 2008. He is entered in the Forest Lane Memorial Park, Hollywood Hills. Wow. This man was a genius. Plus, you know, the tracks. He was really the heart and soul of Motown. And in Motown, you had Holland Dozier Holler in the early years with um, uh, the Supremes. And, you know, they they was the toast of, of Motown, Smokey Robinson, who had a hold on Temptations and Mary Wells, but once Whitfield got into the Temptations in the mid '60s, he really basically controlled Motown. And you had, you know, people like Stevie Wonder that was the man in the '60s, in the late '60s and the '70s, especially in the '70s. Stevie Wonder was the man, and it became more of, you know, writer producer and what was going on with the funk during those times. So Whitfield already was doing this early in the sixties and he created a certain sound. Basically he created a genre. And just like I said with Teddy Riley, you create a genre, a genre, you, you know, you amazing, you know, psychedelic soul or, New Jack Swing or Prince, you know, with what he created, the Minneapolis sound or, you know, electro things that you say, wow, you know, you, you that good of a producer, you that good of a writer, and, you know, that's genius. And, and Whitfield was a genius because he did it with Undisputed Truth the experimental group, and then he did it later with Car Wash, uh, with Rolls Royce, with Car Wash, and a few of their albums. It, you know, it didn't work. It could have been where I think he wanted the lead singer to be a superstar, but it could have worked out better, but they still was a great group. You know, it's nothing like instruments and people playing and people writing. You will never get that back. You know, these days it, it's a few out there who's doing it, who's still writing and producing. But with the technology we got, a lot of people going, but they're not making those albums they made back then. You know, it was genius what they was doing back then. You know, they putting together stuff and then the stuff they promoting is crap. You know, because it, it's good music out there. They just not promoting it. They promoting crap. But Whitfield, you know, he's a genius producer and he's one of my top producers of all time. Uh, it's so many, you know, I can name. I had to make a video about about that. You know, producers like Curtis Mayfield, Prince, you know, they are the top. You know, I think Whitfield is a better producer than Quincy Jones. Yes, I do. And he's on my list. You know, like I said, he's up there with a few, you know, and a few people I, I can name. Like I say, uh, Curtis Mayfield, uh, people like uh, Arif Martin. And a lot of people don't know Arif Martin, but Arif Martin was a hell of a producer. You know, people like that that, you know, can do sound, even uh, Phil Spector. As much as you hate the man, he was a great producer. Yeah, so I'm gonna sign off. And that was the genius of Norman Whitfield. Uh, a great writer, producer, responsible for so many hits on Motown. And then later on, um, was the creator and the founder of Whitfield Records and, you know, 
of the group Undisputed Truth with smiling faces, later with Rolls Royce and Carl Weiss and so on. The master of, you know, I heard it through the grapevine, both versions by Gladys Knight and Marvin Gaye. And a lot of the temptation hits like Ain't Too Proud to Beg and Psychedelic Shack and or a Cloud Nine and many other hits. So my man Norman Whitfield, one of the greatest of all time. Genius. This is Rio 855 with Rio 855 channel. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. And with Retro Vibes. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. I'm saying peace, God bless, and thank you.